with that, we'll go right into questions for Coach and get a mic. We'll start with Jimmy and then we'll go to Rick in the back. Alex, not counting Tillman and McCoy, what, how many receivers do you feel comfortable with that are ready to play? Yeah, I think we're, we're as deep at the receiver spot in terms of guys we feel good about playing right now. Um, I think they're still continuing to, one, get healthy. Um, it was good to get a couple of days off, get some guys that we were being really, really careful with, with Jimmy Callaway, uh, you know, Chaz, get those guys back healthy, squirrel, running around. I think a lot of it will depend on, on how this next week and a half goes. I think <clears throat> I've said this before, how they handle – Camp and spring ball is one thing. How they handle what a real college football player is supposed to be and how they can handle the, the students on campus now is rush week. I, I'm driving down Neyland, so like, I get it. How do they handle all of that? How do they go through a normal Tuesday, Wednesday, into a Thursday, a Friday game day, throwing 15 hours of class at them? And I'm not trying to downplay who can play, who cannot play, but who cannot feel like a freshman as a freshman, and if we can play a bunch of guys, that would be awesome. I don't have a number. I feel like we're, we're two deep, two and a half deep there, which a year ago I felt like we started that way, and then I did not feel that way after we started conference play. So the hope is that we can be at eight guys that can roll through, that can <clears throat> keep us fresh so we can play as fast as we possibly can. But that would be the goal is to have seven to eight that can go. I feel that like we do at this point. Coach, back here, especially for the guys coming back in year two of this system, how much more efficient have things been in the execution of what you guys want to get done in camp? Yeah, super, super efficient. Like today, first day that we actually split up scout teams. A year ago, first day of scout teams, we spent half the period doing up-downs because the tempo of how scout teams should look was not what we wanted or what the standard is. You're not teaching the standard anymore of how to practice, of, man, the tempo of what we're trying to do, whether we're trying to slow it down or speed it up. So drastically different. You're having conversations more so about scheme and how you beat a defender in certain looks more so than actual technique within a team period. So you're able to focus on detail of actual plays of schemes more so than we certainly were a year ago at this time. I think as we got going, as the year went, I think once the guys understood who we were playing, the difference right now is we feel like we're deeper with how many guys can play. Um, and at the same time, the young guys are seeing the old guys, like we talked about the receivers. Squirrel, Brew, uh, Caleb Webb, they're looking at Cedric and Jalen now. And so there's guys that they can look at and say, man, that's how you do it, awesome. I'm gonna try to replicate it and obviously get better. So drastically, it's easier in year two um, the expectations are also higher and the standards are also higher. So our job as coaches hold them to that standard. And then if they don't achieve the standard, put their feet to the fire. Austin and Vince. I know you have a little bit more time to game plan in terms of attention than ball state quicker than you would in a normal game week. Does that change anything for you when you're growing up, you know, kind of your offensive game plan uh, to have that extra time? And then where do you feel like you are at the tight end position? Obviously, I know Yeah, so from a game planning standpoint, the way we structured it this week is this week is a uh, mock game week for us. So we're treating today as a normal Tuesday, tomorrow as a normal Wednesday. We're game planning as if we were on a short week or on a normal week, I should say. And then we'll repeat it starting with uh, Sunday. Um, I think my only point to our staff was let's only put in what we know for sure we're going to want to do. I think inherently when you have more time, it's like a bye week. You put in a bunch and then take stuff out. And I've always thought that was backwards, but I've also been guilty of doing the same thing. So really a base game plan today, normal down the distance tomorrow, tight zone, third downs, and then Thursday, Friday will be our normal Thursday, Friday prep going into game week, and then we'll repeat it again next week. So. Uh, we're treating it like a normal game week, I think, for the guys, especially guys that weren't with us a, a year ago. It gives them an idea of how fast it goes. Morning practice team, Tuesday gets on you really, really fast, both as a coach and a player. 
Um, so for us, it's good to go through a, a normal game week. So we're here early, we're staying late, we're, we're doing our normal um, Sunday through Friday deal, uh, and then we'll repeat it next week. Uh, from a tight end perspective, you know, I feel really good with Princeton, uh, feel really good with Jacob, um, feel awesome with those two guys. I feel like they've both taken really big steps. I feel like we're as healthy and as multiple with both of those guys as we've ever been in this scheme. Um, that next spot going in, man, um, we've challenged Miles in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways, he's grown up. In a lot of ways, he's still got a really long way to go. Um, we've challenged Charlie Browder. He has gotten better every single day. I think he can help us. I think Miles can help us how fast they adjust to what game day is. I said it a year ago about Miles. Miles was physically as ready as a freshman as I've ever had the pleasure to coach. He's had to continue to grow up and figure out what it is to play hard every snap, what it is to prepare for a game week. Uh, that's the challenge to him. Um, and when, when he's ready to do so, he'll have a chance to be a really, really good player in this offense because he can do every single part of what we want. Um, but I do think between Charlie and Miles, we'll have a three and a four with Hunter Salmon in there helping in some ways. Um, so do we have five ready to play in the SEC? Probably not right now. Uh, but I'm hoping by the time we get to Florida, we do. Uh, Alex, two things I'll ask them separate. One, how good are, is your group of wide receivers at making those decisions with their routes, choice routes, and being able to read the coverages? And making the right decisions in sync with the quarterback. How do you feel about that when you receive um, I feel I feel like that's a big part of what we do offensively. We work that a ton. There's been so much time on task over the last two years on that. I feel like they're as good as they've been in two years. Um, obviously, as you bring in new guys, um, those guys got to get used to it and grow and get on the same page with the quarterbacks. That's probably the biggest part of what we do in that realm in our vertical passing game. Um, but I also think it's, it's just a part of what we do. Uh, we spend a lot of time on that. We spend a lot of time on everything else we do in our, in our vertical passing game, our play action pass game. Um, but those guys getting on the same page, all the routes on air through the spring, all the routes on air in the summer, we try to put a huge emphasis on that for those guys to see it the same and be on the same page timing wise. And what specifically can you tell us about Ball State? Yeah, Ball State defensively um, lost a ton. It's, it's a little bit more difficult to watch than you want to because you're watching scheme and a majority of those guys are gone, whether they were seniors, transfers, whatever the case may be. So you've got, you've got film, personnel film on guys from all over the place um, in terms of where they came from so you could see what guys' body types are and what they are. Schematically, you're watching the film, but again, constantly talking – through it with the guys that, hey, that, that body that you see is not actually the body. Um, they bring a defensive lineman back that's a good player. I think the heart of their defense is their Mike linebacker. He is back, led the team in tackles a year ago. I think he had 107 tackles. Um, he's all over the place, doesn't ever come off the field. And then they got a corner that played a ton two years ago, didn't play as much last year, I think is a good player. Um, and then just about everybody else is, is not on that film a year ago. So. Just like the last, my last two years in this offense, you're preparing for the unknown in a lot of ways, which is, uh, which is a little bit nerve-wracking and also kind of fun because you really have no idea what you're going to get. Uh, so you're, you're preparing in a lot of ways to keep it relatively simple, have answers to what they do, and then after the first drive be able to adjust and, and see what they bring. But, Hard playing bunch. They won their conference two years ago, the COVID year. Um, I've known Coach New for, for a long time. They're going to play really, really hard. They have the ability to score a lot of points. They play really aggressive on defense. So we're going to have to go play. Mike West and Rob. How do you approach at this point in camp his preparation? Bill, is he going to be able to play? Or I did not hear the name. I'm sorry. Brew McCoy. Brew McCoy. Yeah, uh, we're approaching it like like we're going to have him. Um, we've approached it that way since he got here. Um, and then we'll adjust as we need to uh, if we don't. But um, 
really good football player, has fit right into our culture, has fit, has added to our culture, hardworking, tough, smart, um, really dynamic. To be honest with you, in a lot of ways, super, super grateful to be here and, and have another chance to do this um, and having a blast with it. So we're, we're approaching it like we're going to have them, and then we'll, we'll adjust if worst case scenario happens. But anybody got any pull? Let's make sure we have them. Anybody? Austin? That'd be you, right? I would assume as the elder member of the staff here. <laughs> have seen what y'all do now you know that I guess the pace is still an issue for people but for people that have seen what you do what you like what you don't like how do you and with a lot of these same players how does that change things for you at all yeah uh, changes a lot for you um you, you you've got to have answers to you got to anticipate answers to people's answers um I think a lot of the time the first time you play a team if you're referring to specifically the tempo um, just like you saw a year ago, teams settle in, players settle in. I think it's really hard to replicate in practice. Uh, so people tend to settle in. You get to the second, third quarter, like people are used to it. Play callers on the other side of the ball get figure out what they can and can't get in at the tempo. Um, so you got to have answers. Um, for us, that's a multitude of different things. I, I don't necessarily want to share it, but, but we have answers to replicate tempo answers to how they answer it um, in a lot of in a lot of ways that's what I spent all spring doing is man we hurt them here they're going to take that away what's the next counter punch to that um, but there was no secret coming in a year ago we came from a place the system from a tempo standpoint from a spacing standpoint similar we've grown and evolved in a lot of ways you saw us a year ago as the year went we've grown and evolved um, in terms of how we get the ball out um, formationally, we've expanded. We got to continue to expand formationally, um, whether it's motions or disguising pictures offensively. We've continued to grow. We're drastically different today than we were two years ago leaving the previous place. We're drastically different today than we were leaving the bowl game in Nashville in terms of what we what we are, what we have personnel wise. We're different, um, so we've had to grow and evolve too, and um, and. Like I said, you spend a lot of the offseason looking for answers where we got hurt and where we hurt people knowing that there's going to be answers to that. So I think you've got to continue to evolve offensively. I don't know that we're going to line up in the pro eye, uh, you know, play one. That was a joke. Um, but, but we certainly have to continue to evolve and look different. Coach. Not a funny one, Bill. It's all right. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jalen Wright just went through practice uh, with us. Um, he looks like he's got fresh legs, fresher than almost everybody else. Um, he's been so eager to go. Uh, we've been really, really smart with him, knowing the beating that, that a back in this conference is going to take. Uh, but he was full go today, looked good, um, like a cool energy about him. Um, he, he doesn't like sitting out. so. He's ready to go. Uh, we'll see rotationally how it ends up being. You know, we're, we're going to play hopefully four of those guys. Knock on wood, everybody stays healthy. We'll play a bunch of those guys. Um, but he, he's looked, again, today was the first day where he's been with us full go going through it. So he was eager and, and excited. Uh, you asked about Dylan Sampson, Justin Williams, Thomas. Um, Dylan, man, like uh, – like a unique clone of Jabari in terms of being able to get the ball out in space, uh, really, really good hands, elite vision for a young guy, like different than what I thought off a of high school film. Uh, I like the high school film. You just didn't know he was going to have vision like he has. He's a natural running back. Um, he's not big, but he's as fast as any back in this league is going to be. So our job with him is going to be to get him in space and, and let, him, let him go hit home runs at whatever point that allows, allows us to happen. Uh, Justin, different back. Justin has had to evolve and grow into that role. He's bigger. He has learned how to play more physical. He's still learning how to play like a true big back. Um, 
and his growth has been a little bit slower than Dylan's, but he's shown monumental growth as well. Um, I still think, again, with any freshman, until they get, get in there under the lights and, and see what it actually is with no coaches on the field, it's really hard to guess what they're going to be. But he's shown really, really good steps to growing. So I'm happy with both where both of those guys are. I think they can both help us in different ways. Um, again, with, with a back like Dylan and Justin, both being young guys, my main concern is always the protection part of it. You know, there's no like redos in protection on protecting the quarterback. So that's the biggest focal point for those guys is making sure they're good on the tempo, which we play, picking up quarterback pressures and, and, and being able to protect the quarterback. If that part is good, those guys will both be able to help us a ton this year. Yeah, it would be the same as it was 14 days ago. Uh, so we're, we got who we got. Um, we're excited about who we got. Again, I feel like we hit on both of those freshmen. Um, you know, didn't know until Dylan got here in June if we did. So we feel like we've got, we've got four guys. Patrick Wilk at, for a walk-on kid out of Nashville. Um, he's taken a huge step forward. He got a bunch of work with Jalen Wright being out. Um, Com confident with him, comfortable with him. So we're going in with, with those guys. We got a plan if, if kind of like a year ago, um, got really, really banged up at that position. We got a plan, again, going into it, knowing we were thinner there than we wanted to be. We were able to have a backup plan there if we need to. Um, it's not necessarily the way you want to go. You knock on wood can keep all those guys healthy and, and go through the year. but. Got a plan if not, but we're in the same spot we were when we started camp, which is not deep. Ryan, your hand came up from Bobby. Josh, maybe with Lenny Clear, you guys plan to play both left tackles at least in the first game. How, what's your comfort level with those guys and how they kind of grow throughout camp? Yeah, I think the best thing, uh, Ryan, for both those guys is that there was real competition in there. And they both knew they couldn't have a bad day. Inherently, Coach Ellerby's rotated both of them. They've both gotten to play next to Jerome. Um, I feel good with both those guys. They're different players. Um, you know, they're both inexperienced, but they're different. Um, so they both have weaknesses. They both have strengths. I don't know that you call the game any different with either one in there by any means. But, but I think, again, similar to the freshmen, JJ's played some and Gerald's played some. Um, so just not a ton and not a ton of meaningful reps. So you go in, you, you kind of let it sort out as they go. They'll both play and uh, we'll see who, who it is that they, you know, that we have more sync with. If it's both of them, awesome. That will be deeper there than we felt like we were a year ago. Thank you.